ISO 22000, 2018 Determination of CCP and OPRP Decision Tree If you are working related to food safety system certification, the decision tree or determination of CCP and OPRP would not be new thing. Sometimes you may be confused with this section. So today Food Desk decided to talk about how to develop a decision tree as per the ISO 22000, 2018. Simply Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point Decision Trees are tools that help you decide whether a hazard control point is a critical control point or operational prerequisite program. The purpose of a decision tree is to support the judgment of the team and help you to confirm whether the hazard needs more food safety controls. Decision trees are not mandatory elements of HACCP but they can be useful in helping you determine whether a particular step is ACCP. What type of decision tree you are using? Codex decision tree model or your own model. Sometimes you may confuse with, which type model is more suitable for the ISO 22000-2018. However, when comparing Codex model and ISO 22000, 2018, it can observe that there are some deviations between the ISO requirements and Codex. Here is what ISO 22000, 2018 explains about selection and categorization of control measures. Source, ISO 22000, 2018 Food Safety Management Systems, Requirements for any or organization in the food chain. Here is the decision tree model created by Food Desk with references to ISO requirements, so you can try this decision tree for ISO 22000, 2018. Below decision tree model is applied for the significant hazards and questions are as follows. An assessment of each of the control measures is needed to categorize them to be managed as OPRP or CCP, so you need to evaluate the probability of failure and how easy it is to keep it under control, its severity when failing and what effect can cause the measure implemented, its location with respect to other activities implemented to reduce specific hazards, whether it's specific for that particular hazard, if other measures are required to reduce the hazard to an acceptable level. The viability to establish measurable critical limits and or action criteria. The feasibility of monitoring to detect failures on the applicable determined limits and also corrections in case of failure. Don't forget to maintain this decision-making process and results as documented information. Your hazard control plan must contain as a minimum, the following information for all identified CCPs and OPRPs. What food safety hazard are you controlling with a CCP or OPRP? What measure have you put in place to do so? The critical limit, S or action criteria in place that can't be exceed. How do you monitor this activity? Which corrections and corrective actions will be carried out if critical limits or action criteria is not met? Who is responsible for this activity, defined responsibilities and authorities? What records do you maintain as monitoring evidence? As mentioned in this section when talking about definitions, the critical limits established for CCP must be measurable. Likewise. The action criteria defined for the OPRP must be also measurable or observable. You need to define why you have selected those specific critical limits and action criteria and establish a monitoring system to defect any failure. If visual inspections from staff are implemented as a monitoring system for a specific OPRP, you need to define what instructions or specifications were provided to personnel in order to ensure the system will be effective. As usual, at this point, 
any failure will be considered non-conformity and you must follow it up establishing immediate corrections, retaining unsafe products under control, analyzing the cause and implementing corrective actions to ensure recurrence is prevented. We hope that this session will be helped to you to get an idea to develop a decision tree for ISO 22000, 2018.